Hi, welcome back. Joel Duff here. Let's talk about the lungfish genome and how similar they are to land animals. That's the question. Hey, let's talk a little Ken Ham, leptin genes, blast searches, phylogenies, and maybe some more fun things, but hopefully in a very short video. I want to make just one central point from this. All right, so what spurred me to, to make this video? Uh, yesterday on the Answers in Ju Genesis Answers News program, one of their highlighted uh, articles was this new uh, paper um, about lungfish and the publication of the new lungfish genome that came out in Nature. And Ken Ham uh, and his colleagues were talking about this paper, and I'm not going to go into all the problems and misconceptions <laughs> you know, uh, and the fact that they each contradict each other in some ways without even each of them realizing that. Um, but uh, I thought it'd be interesting to talk about the lungfish because you know they make it sound like the lungfish is is somehow uh, more of a fish than it is anything else, and I want to show you that that's not really that obvious. And one of the points of the, the paper was is that the genome structure of a lungfish um, is very uh, land vertebrate uh, like, much more so than it is like uh, aquatic uh, fish, um, the teleost, which are the ray fin fish, or the most common uh, form of fish. And so uh, I just want to uh, give you an example of that uh, just from my own work and some observations I made this morning just doing some really quick what's called blast searches and I will show that to you. So here's the paper, Giant Lungfish Genome, and the thing that's notable about the lungfish is um, for a long time people thought that uh, lungfish or postulated that lungfish may be the most similar animals that are fish-like uh, to land animals. And so there's been a lot of interest in understanding and looking at its genome to see like what its genes are actually like and what it does with them. The problem with it is it's 14 times the size of a human genome. It's absolutely massive and complex. Uh, but now that we have the type of sequencing technology we have, it's become possible to sequence it and it's been done. The entire uh, massive genome has been sequenced and uh, compared to both fish and to land vertebrates and an analysis done of that which shows a number of different ways in which we can do these types of comparisons. Uh, so what I did was, what I want to ask is um, a very simple question actually. Um, is okay. You know, we talked uh, last time. We talked about the platypus. We said that uh, you know appearances can be deceiving on the outside of an organism. Things look like things, um, but when you get into the genome, that's really where the story is told. In terms of the genome structure, often tells us a lot more about relationships of uh, different organisms with each other. And so one simple way to compare organisms is just look at their DNA sequence and ask how similar it is. And so if you were to ask the question, well, okay, so how similar is a lungfish to other animals? Like, which one is, which, its genes, what do they seem most similar to? One way of doing that would be to take some genes from the lungfish and do a, a pairwise comparison or a sequence comparison, line up their sequences with other organisms and simply ask what similarity they have. You know, how similar are they at that basic DNA sequence level? I can't do that because the lungfish genome has not been, um, well, it has been published, but it was, it's hard to extract the genes that I'm interested in uh, in just a few minutes. So I'm going to look at the genes that I know of, which come from the coelacanth. And coelacanths are also in that lungfish group uh, and are very similar to them. So I'm going to compare the, the coelacanth. Uh, with the caveat that the lungfish is considered more similar to land animals than the coelacanth. So whatever I say and whatever I show you about coelacanths, just imagine that lungfish are actually probably more similar to uh, land animals than they are to uh, fish. So what I've done here is I've just done some quick blast uh, uh, things. So what blast is, is, you can go to the National Center for Biotechnology Information, where the where, which houses all the gene sequences that have been done and I went and I found a gene for coelacanth. In this case I found leptin. I've worked on leptin. I've sequenced this gene not from coelacanths but I've sequenced it from fish and I've also sequenced it from, from some mammals. So I'm very familiar with this gene and I've lined this gene up and I've looked at this gene and uh, so what I did was I took the latimeria that's the coelacanth that's right here. So whoops 
don't have my pen active. All right, so the Latimer area right here, that's uh, coelacanth. I, I took the coelacanth sequence for the leptin gene, which is, a, which is a gene that makes the hormone leptin, and I blasted it. All right, so blasting means you take that sequence and you say, like, okay, I want you to compare this to the other billions of sequences that are available and have a supercomputer just line up sequences and ask, where can I find the most similar sequence to the one that you gave me? All right, I gave them Latimeria and I said, just tell me what sequence is most similar in the national database. Um, and it comes back and it tells me that, um, okay, the most sequence, most similar sequence to the one you gave us is Latimeria. Uh, whoops, right, that came back number one. It's 100% identical. Well, it should be because uh, it should find itself in the database. So that's a good sign, found itself. What's it most similar to? It's most similar to uh, this. Um, uh, organism. Oh yeah, I'm trying to remember exactly what that is. I think that's the um, uh, giant salamander. Okay, uh, Chelonia is. Oh, I can't find my pen. All right, Chelonia is a um, a turtle, uh, and then you can see down here you've got the alligator and so forth. So you've got uh, what what shows up as being the most similar. What shows up just in this like just tell me what's most similar is land animals, all right? Vertebrates, specifically amphibians and reptiles. Um, yeah, they're not exactly the same. They're, they're quite dissimilar to the uh, Latimeria sequence. However, they're more similar to the Latimeria or the coelacanth sequence than the coelacanth is to any fish. Uh, I actually got results for the first top 500 results. And as I go down that, I have to go down all the way down that list. And um, there's mammals in that list, so it's more similar to mammals than it is to fish. And finally, way down the list, you finally get to, hey, there's a couple fish here which have somewhat similar sequences to the coelacanth. So the coelacanth and the lungfish, I'm sure, all right, are themselves all right, far more similar to land animals than they are to other fish. Um, all right, so I want to, I've actually published on this particular um, gene when we worked on uh, finding the uh, leptin gene in birds. And so here I am, I'm just a small part of this, but what I did was I aligned the sequences, the protein coding sequences for the leptin uh, and the leptin receptor protein. Uh, and then did phylogenetic analysis on it, which just means comparing the sequences and showing which ones are more similar to each other in a phylogenetic tree. And I'll show that to you. So here's my phylogenetic tree in which we were looking at these two birds and mostly we were interested in like showing that these bird sequences, what are they most similar to? Well, they're most similar to reptiles. So here's all the, the reptiles here, right? The, what's called the reptile clade. And then up here, you've got your mammals. So all these leptin sequences, the length of this line just represents the number of differences there are in the raw sequence, in this case, protein coding sequence, but you can imagine that also being the DNA sequence. Um, so the longer the line, the more differences there are between organisms. Ah, there's our platypus that we talked about the other day. That, the platypus genome was just sequenced uh, and published not too long ago too. So there's been a lot of news lately. And the platypus is that weird mammal that lays eggs. And we can see that, yeah, it's, it's more different than the other mammals, but it clearly is more similar to mammals than it is to any other kind of living organism. Uh, now down here, here's our coelacanth. And you can see our coelacanth is right here in a group that includes the um, amphibians. So here's a frog and a salamander. You can see the frog and the salamander are quite a bit different from each other and really not that much different than they are from a coelacanth. Uh, and this whole group, right, this whole group here are the um, tetrapods, right, walk around on four legs, uh, except that it includes coelacanth, which has fins instead of legs, but they're included in the four-legged group. And then down here we find, like, how different are the other fish? Well, these two the carp and the, lep and the zebrafish represent the other bony fin fish, which is your 
the vast majority of fish. Now the gar is also kind of an odd odd one too, and I would say the gar, now that it's been sequenced, kind of looks like this. It sits about right there. And then you have the elephant shark down here. So these organisms have very, very different leptin genes uh, compared to the tetrapods. And you can see coelacanth just saying, if you just throw it, uh, you know, you throw the, you throw the database, you know, you throw a, a sequence, sorry, I was gonna say, you tell the computer, just like, show me which one's most similar, all right? Not, I'm not including any kind of uh, evolutionary assumptions or anything in the analysis that's saying, like, take into account some something evolutionary idea, okay? It's just saying, line up these sequences and just tell me which ones are most similar. And voila, you end up with the coelacanth being a much more similar to amphibians and clearly being inside the tetrapod clade versus the fish uh, clade. All right, so I have a lot. Is that just an oddity? Is just is that just an outlier? Are there other examples? You know, what happens if we just pick out some other genes from the genome and then throw it at this computer and say, like, now tell me how similar this one is? So that's what I did. I just went in and I just selected out some genes from Latimeria. Uh, some of these genes I didn't even know what they were. And I just said, okay, I'll take that gene and I'll just hit blast and then I'll get the results and I just took a screenshot and I'm showing it to you. So here's insulin. I, I do know what insulin is. Okay, so here's the insulin gene, which is found in vertebrates, uh, including fish. And so I know there's a fish insulin gene. And so the question was, what is um, coelacanth most similar to, or lungfish most similar to? So I threw it in there, Latiberia comes out similar to itself, 100% similar to itself. And then we look at these first ones here, we have, um, these right here, these are the scientific names, all right, whoops, sorry. These are amphibians, all right, and you see down here, actually one of these is a uh, turtle, uh, and then we have an alligator, you'll recognize that name, that's actually the scientific name, and then we have, here's struthio, uh, that is ostrich, so there's a bird, you know, which is included in the reptile clade, and so we have, once again, we've got, what's it most similar to? We've got vertebrates, include specifically amphibians and reptiles. And then I got another 250 results, and as you scan down those results, you'll start seeing some things like mammals in there, which are about 70% similar. And then finally, you may see, I can't remember in the insulin one, whether there was any in the top 250 um, that were fish at all. Uh, so you line those up, I did a quick little alignment here. I just selected out a couple of the samples. So here's the, uh, amphibian, here's uh, the ostrich, alligator, oh, and the uh, Arinchothicus, uh, I can never say that, um, that's your platypus, uh, and so all these little gray areas here, that's where the sequence is identical between the sample we put in, which would be coelacanth, and these other samples, and you see there's quite a few differences. Um, it's, there's no doubt that the coelacanth and lungfish are unique organisms in the sense that they're, they're quite different than any other organism on Earth. But when you ask what are they most similar to, their sequences are much more similar to these other land animals than they are to other fish. Uh, what about the uh, vesicle associated membrane protein 2, VAMP2? All right, so I just pulled out that particular gene, which is 1200 base pairs, at least the section of it that they have sequence for. And I asked what's it most similar to, and once again, we come back with, uh, this is, oh, I think this actually is the, uh, I, I got my, I don't know my scientific names of amphibians, but uh, maybe this was the giant uh, salamander. Uh, we got a variety of different salamanders and so forth, and all the way down here we've got alligators, and so you end up with in, into the uh, reptiles again as you go. Uh, this gene happens to be much more similar uh, overall, so it's a more, we call that a more conserved gene. It's more similar across all organisms. But again, the coelacanth is more similar to land animals, and if I were to draw a little tree of this showing the relationships, the coelacanths would be like right in there with the tetrapods rather than with other fish. Um, and I don't, I don't wanna pretend like every single result was the same. Um, here's uh, coelacanth. And this is a bony fish. 
Uh, and uh, actually these first couple are bony fish. So when I did the ACE2 receptor, I was interested in that one because the ACE2 receptor is the protein that's on the surface of some of our cells that attaches to the um, uh, coronavirus. All right, and so um, uh, just to illustrate that uh, ACE2 receptors are found in lots of different organisms and coronavirus can infect a lot of different organisms because they have ACE2 receptors. But ACE2 receptors are not all identical in their protein codes, which means they have different shapes. And so different, uh, you know, the, the current uh, SARS-CoV-2, which attaches to our cells, don't necessarily attach as well to ACE2 receptors of other animals, especially as you get to more distantly related animals, which have more different proteins, which we can see here. Um, okay, so in this case, uh, I, I said they were um, more similar to fish. The ACE2 receptor has got some similarity. I'm going to find my, oh, there it is. Right. It has, uh, you know, only 72% similarity to uh, the, 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 these other fish are only 72% similar to the coelacanth, whereas uh, the amphibians and reptiles are, you know, 70, 71% similar. So it's like saying they're equal distant. They're, they're, you're unique. They're, they lay out there in a fairly unique area in terms of their, their genetics and their genome. Now, the other thing about the genome is that um, there are other features of genomes. There's the order of the genes themselves. And in that sense, the order of the genes that are found, even though the similar genes might be found in fish and in land uh, vertebrates, the order of the genes is generally much more similar to land animals than it is to fish. And then when you look at the types of repetitive sequences, and by the way, the genome is massive because it has huge numbers of repetitive sequences where um, chunks of uh, uh, interspersed elements have repeated themselves and copied themselves to great extents. But different kinds of repetitive elements uh, have certain, certain features that we can see in them. Uh, and uh, there are features to um, vertebrates, uh, repetitive elements, or animal repetitive elements that you can look at and say, oh, I can tell that's an animal repeat versus a plant repeat, because plants have lots of repeats too, but they are, they are made in different ways. Well, there's a difference between land animal repeats and the percentage and types of repeats that are found. There's many different classes and varieties of repetitive elements. Um, those repetitive elements are in the coelacanth and in the lungfish from that paper are land animal-like versus the repetitive elements that you find in fish and sharks. Um, so once again, you look at a number of different features of the genome, you find out that lungfish uh, have many more similarities to land animals than they do to other organisms. They have some of their own unique features as well. I mean, they are organisms that are different and have uh, acquired their own uh, unique features uh, over time. All right, so that's just a, that's a quick summary. And I, I, just, I just wanted to show you that the, this, you know, uh, Ken Ham likes to talk about how it's obvious sometimes, you know, that, that uh, like it's obvious. He didn't say this exactly in that presentation, but he said this about other organisms. He'll say like, it's obvious that it's just a fish, right? Um, you know, it lives in the water and it has fin-like, you know, things and uh, sure, it can gulp air and do some things that are kind of unique, so it makes it a unique kind of fish, but nonetheless, it's clearly a fish. It's not an animal walking around on land, right? So uh, it's silly for anyone to think that this could be a land animal or more similar to a land animal. But as I'm trying to show you here, just the simplest of analyses all right. Uh, anybody can do a blast search out there. I could show you in a couple minutes how to do it, and you could look for yourself, and you could just ask, "Hey, what are its what is its genome like?" Oh, its genome. If if I just gave you blind sequence and didn't tell you what it was and said, "Figure out what this is most like," you'd be like, "Oh, well, that's most like land animals, right? Most it's more like an amphibian than anything else." And so I would say it's probably more amphibian-like than it is fish-like. Um, Yet, you know, it does live in the water and it seems like a fish, but it really has the history of something like a land animal. All right, I'll leave it there for now. Quick look at the lungfish genome.